Hi again, and welcome to this week's episode of Utopia. Did you know that the world's largest organism can be found in Utah? Cool, right? This 106-acre aspen forest is located in Fish Lake National Forest near Richfield, Utah. But the aspen grove is in trouble. Here's Sean King and our story about Pando, the trembling giant. Drive three hours south from Salt Lake City to a place called Fish Lake National Forest, and you can stand aside the world's largest organism, an aspen grove named Pando. With an estimated 47,000 tree trunks covering 106 acres, all from one seed, and genetically identical, Pando's trunks are actually stems. What looks like separate trees from above ground are actually interconnected, sharing one root system. Pando is quite impressive. Unfortunately, Pando is sick and dying. We're sitting in the middle of the Pando Aspen Grove. This is probably the only Aspen Grove and one of the few groves of the world of any tree species that has a name. And Pando is Latin for I spread. Dr. Paul Rogers is an adjunct associate professor of ecology at Utah State University and the director of the Western Aspen Alliance. And he recently published a paper documenting the decline of Pando in the journal PLOS One. By examining a 72-year historical archive of aerial photos of the grove, Paul found evidence of a significant decline in the forest's density. The first set of these aerial photographs were taken in 1939, and I have them at roughly 10 to 15 year intervals from then until 2011. And what I can do is take the same frame and project the outline of the Pando clone over that and then I can qualitatively track, just visually track, the differences in this forest thinning out. That, that pattern uh, of uh, aerial photographs over that period shows some of the manipulations we've done. We've put a campground in here, we've built some, a few cabins in here, but what it really shows is the thinning of the forest over time. And that tells me that tr older trees are dying and that younger trees are not filling in those gaps. A gentle breeze unveils the impetus behind the naming of this species, the quaking aspen. Part of the willow family, it is also referred to as trembling aspen, and thus Pando is sometimes called the trembling giant. Typically, aspen trunks or stems only live about a hundred years. When death is near, the stem sends a chemical through the root system that signals it's time to reproduce prompting sprouts by the thousands from the rootstock. These sprouts grow into saplings, which grow into new, mature stems. But this process seems to have been interrupted with Pando. Uh, Pando is in very poor health, and the, and the clone is dying out because old trees are dying and there are not young trees to replace them. I often use the analogy of a human community. Imagine we lived in a city of 47,000 people, but every single citizen was 85 years of age. This would not be a very sustainable community. Paul's photo evidence, alongside his team's contemporary field measures, proves that Pando is in decline. But why? If Pando was to be saved, Paul would need to answer that question. Thank you. 
And the reason why those communities are, are missing those younger communities is because we have browsing of herbivores in this area, mostly mule deer and cattle that are eating the young sprouts. And they're not only eating them today, we know now from recent evidence that they've been eating them for certainly years, if not decades. have new growth in aspen from the suckers, these uh, asexually it's reproducing sprouts. Um, there's a lot of energy in that. There's also a lot of nutrition. And the animals, particularly elk, somewhat less deer, really want to get to that. And so they go right for the young ones. If you have enough of that going on year after year, it starts taking away your forest. We use the term from below instead of from above. Deer, elk, and cows. The cows may be a more recent introduction, but why suddenly damage from deer and elk? Turns out, another man-made calamity. Utopia will be right back.